Earlier, we mentioned that machine learning is all about a computer learning the patterns that distinguish things. Like for activity recognition, it was the pattern of walking, running, and biking that could be learned from various sensors on a device. To show how that works, let's take a look at a set of numbers and see if you can determine the pattern between them. OK, here are the numbers. There's a formula that maps x to y. Can you spot it? Take a moment. OK, well, the answer is y equals 2x minus 1. So whenever you see a y, it's twice the corresponding x minus 1. And if you figured it out for yourself, well, well done. But how did you do that? How would you think you could figure this out? Maybe you can see that the y increases by 2 every time the x increases by 1. So it probably looks like y equals 2x plus or minus something. And then when you saw x equals 0 and y equals minus 1, so you thought, hey, the, the something is a minus 1, so the answer might be y equals 2x minus 1. You probably tried that out with a couple of other values and see that it fits. Congratulations. You've just done the basics of machine learning in your head. So let's take a look at it in code now. OK, here's our first line of code. This is written using Python and TensorFlow and an API in TensorFlow called Keras. And Keras makes it really easy to define neural networks. A neural network is basically a set of functions which can learn patterns. Don't worry if there are a lot of new concepts here. They will become clear quite quickly as you work through them. The simplest possible neural network is one that has only one neuron in it, and that's what this line of code does. In Keras, you use the word dense to define a layer of connected neurons. There's only one dense here, so there's only one layer, and there's only one unit in it, so a single neuron. Successive layers are defined in sequence, hence the word sequential. But as I've said, there's only one, so you have a single neuron. You define the shape of what's input to the neural network in the first, and in this case the only, layer, and you can see that our input shape is super simple, it's just one value. You've probably seen that for machine learning, you need to know and use a lot of math, calculus, probability, and the like. It's really good to understand that as you want to optimize your models. But the nice thing for now about TensorFlow and Keras is that a lot of that math is implemented for you in functions. There are two function roles that you should be aware of, though, and these are loss functions and optimizers. This code defines them. I like to think about it this way. The neural network has no idea of the relationship between x and y, so it makes a guess. Say it guesses y equals 10x minus 10. It will then use the data that it knows about, that's the set of x's and y's that we've already seen, to measure how good or how bad its guess was. The loss function measures this and then gives the data to the optimizer, which figures out the next guess. So the optimizer thinks about like how good or how badly the guess was done using the data from the loss function. And then the logic is that each guess should be better than the one before. As the guesses get better and better and better and accuracy approaches 100%, the term convergence is used. In this case, the loss is mean squared error, and the optimizer is SGD, which stands for Stochastic Gradient Descent. If you want to learn more about these particular functions, as well as the other options that might be better in other scenarios, check out the TensorFlow documentation. But for now, we're just going to use these. Our next step is to represent the known data. These are the x's and the y's that you saw earlier. The np.array is using a Python library called NumPy that makes data representation, particularly in lists, much, much easier. So here you can see we have one list for the x's and another one for the y's. The training takes place in the fit command. Here we're asking the model to figure out how to fit the x values to the y values. The epochs equals 500 value means that it will go through the training loop 500 times. And this training loop is what we described earlier. Make a guess, measure how good or how bad the guess is with the loss function, then use the optimizer and the data to make another guess and repeat this. When the model has finished training, it will then give you back values using the predict method. So it hasn't previously seen 10, and what do you think it will return when you pass it a 10? Now, you might think it would return 19, because after all, y equals 2x minus 1, and you think it should be 19. But when you try this in the workbook yourself, you'll see that it will return a value very close to 19, but not exactly 19. Now, why do you think that would be? Ultimately, there are two main reasons. The first is that you trained it using very little data. There's only six points. 
Those six points are linear, but there's no guarantee that for every x, the relationship will be y equals 2x minus 1. There's a very high probability that y equals 19 for x equals 10, but the neural network isn't positive so it will figure out a realistic value for y. And that's the second main reason. When using neural networks, as they try to figure out the answers for everything, they deal in probability. You'll see that a lot, and you'll have to adjust how you handle answers to fit. Keep that in mind as you work through the code. Okay, enough theory. Now let's get hands-on and write the code that we just saw, and then we can run it.